Hey, it's Mike Hambright, back for another Flip Nerd VIP interview show. Today I have with me Matt Terrio, who is uh, runs the podcast for Epic Real Estate and a website. He's a coach and a mentor, an author, um, a real estate entrepreneur, and much more. Before we get started with today's show, let's take a moment to recognize our featured sponsors. RealtyMogul.com is an online marketplace for real estate investing, connecting borrowers and capital from accredited and institutional investors. Get a rehab loan fast and close in as little as 10 days. Rates start as low as 9%. We'd also like to thank National Real Estate Insurance Group, the nation's leading provider of insurance to the residential real estate investor market. From individual properties to large-scale investors, National Real Estate Insurance Group is ready to serve you. Please note, the views and opinions expressed by the individuals in this program do not necessarily reflect those of FlipNerd.com or any of its partners, advertisers, or affiliates. Please consult professionals before making any investment or tax decisions, as real estate investing can be risky. Hey, Matt, good to have you on the show. Thanks, Mike. Glad to be here. Good, good. Well, uh, yeah, I know you've got uh, your own podcast and a number of other things going on. And for folks that don't know you, I know a lot of folks do know you, but for folks that don't know you, why don't you tell us a little bit about your your background, maybe starting with kind of how you got into real estate, and then we'll kind of mm-hmm. lead up to what you're doing today. Sure. When, when I got out of the, the Marine Corps, I spent 15 years in the music business, and then after the digital download destroyed that, I found myself flat, broke, bankrupt, divorced, to age 34, bagging groceries for $7 an hour at the grocery store. And I didn't know how to do anything else. I didn't have a plan B. I really missed the lifestyle that, that, the music, that the music business had afforded me. And of all the places, the, the, the advice that really changed the, the course of my entire life was from the grocery store manager who noticed that I was consistently depressed, consistently down. And he had said, you know, Matt, if, if you want your life back, if you want your money back, it's certainly not going to happen here, <laughs> yeah. but um, real estate. It's really the final frontier where the average person has a great shot at achieving great wealth. And, you know, I, I believe that. Whether it's true or not, I guess that's debatable. But I was very vulnerable at the time. I was very susceptible. I was looking for an answer. So I ran with it yeah. and did what the logical thing was to do, to go get a real estate license, right? That's what everybody that wants to get into real estate goes and does. They go get become a real estate agent. And after four years of that, I finally discovered that, you know what, if I was supposed to create wealth and real estate, I think I'm just sitting on the wrong side of the desk. Yeah. I, I need real estate agents working for me. I don't, I'm not supposed to be the real estate agent. So I made this transition to become a real estate investor. I found a great educational program, and, and I just started implementing exactly what they taught me to do. And I didn't wait to know it all. I just, you know, as soon as they told me to do something, I went and did it. And Within 60 days, I had my first little fix and flip deal done and under my belt. It took me about eight more months before I found my second deal. But uh, it all just kind of clicked right there, and I was off and running. And within four years, per the uh, um, definition that Robert Kiyosaki gives it, I had exited the rat race. I had yeah. got my passive income, so exceed my expenses. And then, you know, probably what you've experienced too, Mike, with your success is people, when they witness that, when they watch that, they want to know how you did it. They want to pick your brain. They want to take you to lunch. They want to take you for beers or coffee or whatever it may be because they want that for themselves. Right. And so teaching just seemed to be like the next logical transition. And so now I, I teach people as well as continue to work on my own portfolio. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And so, you know, one of the things that's interesting about real estate investors is there's a lot of folks that have, they say they have a passion, they have an interest. There's usually some love affair with uh, the transformation of a rehab or something like that, but they never are able to kind of pull the trigger and and kind of go all in or even make it out of the gate sometimes. And of course, some of that, it just, like anything, like you said, you, between your first and second deal, it took you, you know, eight months, but you had the wherewithal to just keep pushing forward. And we live in this society where people want, if something can't happen by tomorrow, I'm just going to move on, or mm-hmm. I can't take a pill and drop 40 pounds, then, you know, I'm just going to have to live this way or whatever it is. Right. I mean, what do you think? What do you think? I mean, it really takes this inner drive and of course, maybe some coaching or mentoring or just to kind of keep people focused or try to, but what do you think makes the difference between people that they kind of do get out of the gate and, and really are successful in real estate investing uh, and those that, that, that don't, what do you think? What do you think that is? I think there's, 
there's just a level that one side has made a decision, the other side hasn't. One side has made a commitment to make it work, the other side hasn't. Yeah. You know, what you probably experience as well as, as I do is people will come in and they'll dip their toe in the water. They're like, I'm going to give this a try. How long is it going to take me to get my first deal? That's the that's big question I get all the time. How long is it going to take for me to make money? Right. And this is not a let me give it a try and see if it works type thing. It's a whole other skill. It's a whole other discipline. It's a business in and of itself. Right. And I think the people that take it on as such are the ones that experience mm-hmm. that success. Yeah. It's not just let me go flip a couple houses when I'm short on a few bucks. Right. <laughs> you know, it, it it doesn't work that way. And yeah. I think a lot of people come in thinking that it does. They watch the TV shows and and they they know a friend that flipped a house here or there, and they're like, hey, I'm short on money. I'll just go flip a house and everything will be fine. And as you know, and probably a lot of people listening to us <laughs> right now, they know that yeah. doesn't work that way. You're right, right. Yeah, it's, and it's almost a bad thing if it does work that way for somebody right at the beginning and they kind of get lucky because then they start to uh, reset their expectations of, well, this is how it works. <laughs> so right. I know right. uh, when I first got started in 2008, the market was kind of collapsing. And my first two rehabs, we sold on the first day they were available for cash, which we were kind of thinking, no, there's no way it's this easy. Everybody's talking about how bad the market is. Of course, we, we didn't know. We didn't know at that point. And, of course, it's not that easy. It was just, uh, co- you know, we just got lucky on the first couple rounds. And, you know, you still get lucky every once in a while, but you obviously got to play to win. So, right. Yeah. Right. So what do you think is um, – uh, Does it, do you have to be – I mean, I know in, in your kind of story – uh, you, you probably don't know my story. I wasn't quite, I wasn't the same situation as you, but you know, I was married. Uh, my wife was making more money than me and left her job. My company just filed for bankruptcy. So I, I left, but I essentially was losing my job. We had a new son that was, you know, not six months old and, uh, not even a year old yet. And it was, you know, it was one of those things where just failure was not an option. Uh, mm-hmm. and there's so many people that kind of hit that point that are successful that I know of, but I don't think it necessarily takes that. What, what do you think it takes to be committed to folks? I mean, do you think it's this, do you think it's a lot of the weekend, um, you know, the seminars and stuff they've, they've, they've kind of seen that lead them to believe that, you know, you just sit back and start collecting paychecks and you don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, the gurus <laughs> or the, the educational programs, the abundance of them that are out there yeah. have, have done some damage for sure. They've uh, placed people's expectations at a level lower than where they need to be, I think. Um, it, the, the question there was... Yeah, right, that was me. a rambling question, but it was just more of what do you think it takes for somebody to... Do you think they ha- they don't necessarily have to be you know, burn the bridges to move forward, but just right. that what, what's the inner drive or what's that, that thing it takes for them to just kind of be successful. Got it. You know, it's, it's basic personal development. I think, you know, it's, um, anyone can, you know, you and I, Mike, we could show someone how to fill out a contract very easily and probably do that in about three or four minutes. We could show someone how to put together a marketing piece and mail that out in four or five minutes, but it's really, why won't they do that on a daily basis to get the consistent results, right? Real estate is rather simple business to, to learn how to do, but you have to do it every day. And, you know, it's one thing to say, I'm going to be a millionaire real estate investor, but it's another thing entirely to, to get up and make that declaration every day. Right. So I think you really have to just be in touch and in tune with why you want to do this. Right. You know, it's maybe, you know, you have your, your situation was failure is not an option, that was, that's a good enough why. If failure is not an option, you have to succeed. For me, it was, you know, bagging groceries really sucks. I don't want to bag groceries for the rest of my life. So that was, those were my whys. And it's, you know, everyone has to get in touch with that. Yeah. And if people, here's the hard truth that people have to come to realization with is, if they're not getting the results that they want, if, then they just have to come to grips with, it's just not that important to them hmm. because the, we all know that, that feeling where maybe we're going out on a date with somebody for the first time. We will do 
anything and everything to make that date happen as perfectly as possible. I mean, we set time for the to go pick our to take our clothes to the dry cleaners and to pick them up. We take time to go get the uh, the haircut. We make time to make the reservations and we we put some side of, man, cut our expenses that week to make sure we had enough money to pay for the date and we want to make that a perfect event and we can execute that date anytime that we want. Right. People don't treat their their lives or their professions or their aspirations, their dreams in the same way that they they treat something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, tell us a little bit about your podcast for those that don't know. Uh, you, you've been doing this for, for how long now? I think I'm coming up uh, just past three years, actually, I think. Okay. Awesome. For the real estate podcast. Yes. Awesome. And tell us a little bit about uh, your podcast and how people find it and all that. Sure. It's, it's on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. Uh, we just launched the, just launched or introduced the, our app. So we have an Android app. We have an iOS app. It's Epic Real Estate Investing. And so it's pretty easy to find. If you, if you know how to find a podcast in general, it's, it's very easy to find in the search. Yep. And I've taken a little different approach. You know, we, we touched on it just a little bit already about the educators that are out there that are, have proliferated the entire industry. Is I try to be as authentic and straightforward with the people as possible that this is difficult. It's not get rich overnight. It's not easy. It right. is simple, but it's just like anything else. It's a skill. And there was all a time where, you know, we didn't know how to tie a shoe. We didn't know how to ride a bike. We didn't know how to drive a stick shift. But yep. through consistent and persistent practicing and effort, now we can do all of those things like they're second nature. And I teach that real estate is very much the same way. If you treat it like a skill and you practice it in the same way that you practice tying your shoe, you know, you'll get the results. And I also kind of, take a, a little different approach that rather than, and I get a lot of people that will argue with me on this, but rather than focus on flipping houses and wholesaling houses to make piles of money, focus on holding houses to make streams of money. Yeah. Because streams of money is what's really going to create the wealth. If you're just flipping houses, I mean, it, it's a job, yeah. you know, it's a good job. It's a well-paying job. You can create systems around that. But at the end of the day, it's a job. And, yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm very much a cash flow investor. And yeah. All the appreciation is just icing on the cake. So I really focus on the return on investment of your actual real estate portfolio. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I, I talk about the same things. I mean, for every veteran real estate investor, there, there's nobody that doesn't look back and think, I wish I would have kept that one. I wish I would have kept that one. Um, and sometimes, you know, it depends on your your uh, rental property um, what the profile of a good rental property is, you know, you're not going to keep, it depends on what market you're in, but I know you're a cash flow guy. Like I am, you're not going to keep, you'd rather have $300,000 houses than a $300,000 house. Right. So sometimes that deal we let the, in, in most markets, um, they'll just cash flow, they'll cash flow better. But in, in some markets, uh, you know, we let the, we let the deal dictate what we're going to do with it a lot of times, but, mm -hmm. um, there's no doubt that, you know, we've, we've had some awesome, ridiculously profitable rehab deals, but the minute you sell that house, you're never going to make another penny off of that house. Right. And so it's, right. it's always bittersweet, but yeah, I understand exactly. It's a good, it's a good practice. I mean, if you go to your RIA club, go look for the, the gray haired, silver haired guy in, in the room and ask him what his biggest regret is. Yeah. He'll, he'll say one of two things or he'll say both. He'll say, I wish I would have bought more. Yeah. And he'll say, I wish I hadn't have sold them all. Right. You're going to get a, some sort of combination of that. And so you have to learn from other people's mistakes. Yep. We're not yep. going to be here long enough to make them all on our own. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> leverage yeah. other people's mistakes. Yeah. And on the same mentality, what you talk, I have the same, you know, the same belief as you is this is not a hard business. I mean, it's not, it's not an easy business. It's not that the business is hard. It's not rocket science, but it's a bit of a hustle. And right. unless, unless you keep some houses as rentals and can develop some passive income, you know, uh, you're going to be hustling for that much longer. So <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, so tell it, and then tell us about, uh, tell, tell me about more about the app. So you have an app. What does the app do? Well, rather than some people don't have access to iTunes. Okay. Right. And so they can rather than having to create an iTunes account I to see. access the podcast, they can access the app in the same way that I they ask, access any app. Okay. And when they hit play it, place. Cool. Cool. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, so, and then tell me about some of the other things that you do. I know you have some, uh, coaching business and, and some other things that you do. I want to talk a little bit more about some of the other things you do. It's always sure. interesting too. I gotta say mm -hmm. talking to real estate investors, 
that, um, you know, especially for folks that have been doing it for a while that have had some level of success is we're the most entrepreneurial bunch. Like you, you, you start to realize just like rental properties, you have to get some different irons in the fire and develop some passive income streams. And, and of course, Indeed. you know, I think you're probably like me is that you just love to kind of educate and teach people things too. So, but t sorry, just tell us a little bit about uh, some of the other things you're working on. Sure. Yeah. And what you just kind of said, uh, having multiple irons in the fire, that's one thing learned from the music business is I had one distribution channel. And when that distribution went out, I, I had no business. Yeah. So I have taken that tough, tough life lesson and taken that into my real estate and eliminated all single points of failure. So through the podcast, initially it was there to, to launch an educational program online, but that's turned into a coaching program, a coaching business. It's turned into a wholesaling business. And it's turned into what's probably the most lucrative channel of all of my income streams right now is a turnkey business where we find properties, distressed properties, we fix them up, we put a tenant in place, we coordinate the property management, and then we sell as a cash flowing asset okay. primarily to people that are just, you know, too busy to go out and do it themselves. They've already got a job. They've got, they're a doctor, they're a lawyer, they own a small business, whatever it may be. They're just busy professionals. Right. So, but they understand that they do need real estate in their portfolio somewhere. Yeah. So that's one of the services that we provide. So we teach people how to do it. And for those that don't want to do the heavy lifting, we'll do it for them. Okay. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, this, this may be the first time certainly in our, in our lives, uh, really ever then that real estate is becoming a true asset class for real estate investors, for, uh, inv investors, wall street investors, right. With, mm -hmm. you know, not just mm -hmm. the hedge funds, but even individuals are understanding that, um, you know, this is a place where I can invest even if I'm not an active investor. So, you know, I just uh, came from an event in San Diego and I was fortunate to see Kevin O'Leary from Shark Tank speak. Okay. And he went through what he looks at are what the uh, pension plans of businesses, what they invest in. Hmm. And real estate is the number one asset class right now for pension plans. Wow. So I thought I found that really interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so tell us a little about how some of your, um, some of the, uh, so do you, do you buy real estate? I guess you kind of partner with some of the folks that you coach and things like that. Are you doing this all over the country or certain markets or? Yeah, right now we're, we're in six markets. We are in, uh, Memphis, St. Louis, Kansas city, uh, Columbus, Cincinnati, and Ohio. So all in the Midwest and the South, those are really strong cash flowing markets for us. We have good teams in place in all those markets okay. and, what you find is when you start coaching people and you start interacting with the community of people, you just kind of naturally find people that you, you click with and people that have more money than time and people that have more time than money. And, and you can kind of put all those together to create win-win situations. Um, you know, one lesson I learned, I don't know if you, have you ever played uh, the game cash flow, Mike? Uh, it's been a while, but yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So if you play that game, it's kind of like Monopoly or that game risk. If you're playing individually one person against each other, you know, that can be a three, four, five hour game that goes on forever. Yeah. But what the difference with cash flow is if, if you play and you start partnering and teaming up with the other players, you can get everybody out of the rat race in less than an hour. Hmm. It's really an amazing uh, experience. And so I've taken the lessons that I've learned from that game and applied them into real life. And you know what? They apply in real life as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So, um, what are some of the, can you, can you talk about some of your coaching programs or some of the things you do? What, what folks, you know, folks that are listening to the show, just talk a little bit more about, you know, if uh, they can learn, if they have an interest in learning more about it. Sure. Well, most people that come to me for coaching that take that leap, they are in the middle of a transition. I don't know if that's everyone's situation when they get started in real estate, but most people that, that find their way to me and, and pay the fee is they're, they're in a transition. So we start them off from square one. And I'm really big on, on, on cash flow, as I mentioned with you, but I'm also uh, am big on using your money as a last resort. Excuse me, the mm -hmm. phone was ringing. Um, but using their money as a last resort. I've created my entire real estate portfolio using none of my own money and wow. never having to pull my credit score once. Wow. So that's what I teach. That's it's, it's what I know how to do. So naturally, yeah. that's what I teach. So we have them go through all of their assets to see what they have. Most people have more available to them than they realize. And I start, and I have them go and I cal they calculate 
with the return that each one of their assets are generating. So what do you get in your 401k this year? What do you get in from that stock or your, your life insurance policy or whatever it may be? How much return are you getting from that gold or the silver that's under your bed? And the, the way to create wealth is to analyze those and, and keep track of that rate of return and then constantly looking for other assets or other opportunities that provide a higher return. So a lot of sales and exchanging goes on to help people create their wealth. There's there's one gentleman that, um, you know, he was sitting on like thirty thousand dollars of gold, and you know that gold is just there. You can't spend it. You just sit there and watch the market go up and down. You have no right. control over that. So I just kind of shared with him that he could take that, purchase a house, and that house would generate a cash on cash return of fifteen percent. So that was something that he felt good about doing. And as we went further along in the program, he got a little better at finding the deals, a little better at negotiating the deals, and found a deal that paid 25%. So what he did is he sold that house and bought the house for the same with the 25%. Hmm. So to have him constantly look at the ROI of all their assets and, and, and consistently increasing that and getting yeah. their money to work harder for them. Yeah. And yeah. if you keep doing that, it's – you know, it doesn't take 40 years to retire by any means. It doesn't even take 20. Right. You know, I did it in four years, and most people can do it in 10 or less. Yep, yep. Awesome. And so I know you mentioned uh, you're starting to get a little more um, aggressive, or not aggressive, but focused on, on putting out some new videos on your YouTube channel as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you're talk about a little bit kind of what you're publishing, I guess, on a regular basis so folks can find you. Sure. Sure. On, on the podcast, we put out uh, a feature episode on Mondays. And on Fridays, I have what I've called Financial Freedom Friday, which is a four or five minute video, almost 100% instructional. Okay. And we go ahead and I release that on Friday. So if you are subscribed to the, uh, to the list, to my, to my podcast feed, you'd get notifications of that. And it's almost, uh, I made a, a deal on the very first episode with my audience that I wasn't going to sell anything except 5% of the time. So 95% of my podcast is 100% instructional. I don't hold anything back. I, I don't withhold any secrets. I am com- full disclosure on exactly how I do what I do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. Well, so do you want to tell everybody one more time just how folks can uh, get a hold of you? I know in your podcast, it's the Epic Real Estate Podcast and mm-hmm. your website uh, sure. So that. everything is Epic Real Estate. So yeah. it's epicrealestate.com is the website. Epic Real Estate, uh, Epic Real Estate Investing is the podcast. Awesome. And the YouTube channel is epicrei.tv. And that'll take you to the YouTube channel. Awesome. And uh, I provide a free course. It's a, how to, the two fastest strategies to a paycheck in real estate. And you can access that at freerealestateinvestingcourse.com. Awesome. Awesome. We'll add links to all that stuff. Uh, below the video and uh matt i really appreciate you joining us today you bet mike thank you a lot thanks a lot for having me nice to meet you too awesome awesome. yeah good to meet you okay take care we'll see you around all right right, bye-bye are you a member of flipner.com the most robust real estate investing platform in existence where you can find off-market wholesale deals and great vendors literally in your market you can get access to advice from experts and learn about local clubs and events right in your backyard if not please visit flipner.com and register for a free account you can register in less than a minute. It's pretty much the coolest site that's ever existed in the real estate investing industry. So get on over to flipnerd.com. 